here we are. And I, I just need five minutes of your time. Here we are in a dar two. Uh, in, the, in God's calendar, we call it God's calendar. It's the Hebrew calendar. And the uh, characteristic of this month is that God watches over the confession of his word coming out of our mouth and he hastens to perform it. I love that. Now, here's the deal with a dark. The secret to living in joy and celebration is realizing that you really can be different from what's going on and happening in your life right now. You really can. So Adar then is more than just a month. It's more than any of that. It's a moment and we speak words that set plans of God in motion. We remit their sins. That opens up an opportunity for the Holy Spirit to speak in their lives. Don't you know that there were people that were praying for Paul and they remitted his sins and all of a sudden he gets knocked off of a horse and has an encounter with God all by himself and ends up writing much of the New Testament. You know what I'm saying. And so that is very powerful. So as we in Daniel say, you don't, you don't curse what you bless and bless what you curse. And so we speak words that set the very plans of God into motion. And when you do that, things begin to open up. Gates begin to open up. Doors begin to open up. And so I, I was asking the Lord after we're, uh, I'm, I'm, every knee shall bow and, and thinking about the word of the Lord and thinking about celebration and thinking about Esther. That's what we uh, put in the newsletter and all of that. And then I'm reminded of an incredible, impossible situation that four people were in. And because of something they heard, a decision and a choice that they made, something incredible happened for them. That is what this season of time is. And so in 2 Kings chapter 7, it says that Samaria is surrounded by the Syrian army. And from time to time, we can feel like we're surrounded. And is this ever going to be over? And am I going to get out of it? And all the, all the, the mind games that are running through our uh, head. And the army, if the army was big enough, and it was in that day, this Syrian army, they surrounded this city, and they don't even have to shoot an arrow or, or a spear. They just waited them out. And the enemy thinks right now that they can just say whatever they want to say on any of the news media and we'll just wait them out. And so what happened then is they ran out of food because there was no semis to bring in the food. There was no water. There was no supplies. They were in a famine. And, and they knew that the people would just die or they would become so weak then the enemy would just walk in and take over. Tell your neighbor, no way. So, and Samaria was so hungry that they practiced cannibalism. And sometimes the enemy doesn't ha have to send any big arrows of sickness or dread or disease. They're just, while you're waiting on the promise, they're just waiting you out. And when we're waiting, and here's what happens to us, then we can become vulnerable to doubt and unbelief and depression and discouragement and fear and strife. And that causes a spiritual famine in our own 
life, and it just seemed like it couldn't get any worse. And into that scene, I love this, enters Elijah. Yeah, there's a voice that can come in the middle of the worst it did there. And listen, let me just say this. When God's got a word for you, he can find you wherever you are. If you're locked up, he can find you because there's an appointed time for that moment. And you can seize that moment. So I just want to say, if, if God has ordained an Elijah to walk in your life, no matter what the situation is or the situation's about to do, that was a life-changing word, Barbara, that Elijah had for those people. And he is on the way. And he makes this enough. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Remit their sins. Don't bless and curse and curse and bless. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Yeah, you're in famine and tomorrow, about this time. I love that. Tomorrow about this time, everything could be different. Tomorrow about this time, the miracle of provision could happen. The miracle of peace could happen. The miracle of a voice rising up in the midst of all of this could happen. What a difference a day can make or a moment can make. All we have to do is not quit. So every time I think about this, I think my grandpa used to take me fishing in the Walnut River in the Arkansas uh, river. That's the river over here. Oh, I lived in Udall and we had the Walnut River and we had the Arkansas River and, and, and Grandpa would, uh, my mom's dad would take me uh, fishing and, and so we got out there and we got, we had just a little, kind of a little boat and we were out there and we were out there all day. And so I, I gave my pole to my grand, I think I was like 10 or something. And I said, I quit. I mean, there wasn't a strike. There wasn't a nothing. That no, no fish were anywhere in that uh, river. And I gave my pole to my grandpa Earl and I said, I quit. And as God is my witness, the moment I said I quit, and took my hands off that pole. A whale hit my bait. And I said, Grandpa, Grandpa, I, I've got this big fish. I said, let me, let me reel it in. I've waited my whole life for this moment. And my Grandpa Earl said, no, you quit. Hear ye the word of the Lord tomorrow about this time. So if you planned on quitting in a couple of hours, don't quit. Shout it. Don't quit. So when Elijah went into that, that situation, he said, hey, I know you don't have any food, and I know it's looking bad, and I know the army is out there, and they're going to come get you and all of that stuff, and they're lying, and they're stealing, and they're just waiting, and you're trying to be uh, nice and believe God and all of that. And there were four lepers that were outside of the city because they can't go inside the city. And they, they heard the word of the Lord and they responded to each other and said, why sit we here till we die? And as soon as, that heard, as soon as they heard that word, there was something that opened up called opportunity. You hear the word. You hear a prophetic word. You, you be in the middle of uh, the active movement of what God is saying and doing in a house like this. And there comes that moment that you can make a choice. Do I believe this or do I not? Am I going to act on this 
a word or am I not? So the opportunity comes, the time comes, tomorrow about this time, the opportunity opens up, then you get to make a choice and then you make a decision. And it doesn't matter uh, whether you're educated, whether you've got a degree, it doesn't matter whether you're healthy or wealthy, it's whether you get up and make a move. And it, it, it may be a, a move in the word. It may be a, a move in prayer. Whatever it might be. But the opportunity is now during this season of time that you would make a move. And I love what verse 5 says in that second, uh, second uh, Kings. It says they rose up. Listen. They are, they're eat up. They've got leprosy. They may not have any fingers. They may not have a nose. They may not have a to toes. They may, they, they got trouble. And not only that, it's very, very painful. But the Bible says that they rose up. And when I looked that up in the Strong's Concordance, it means that they were aggressive, they were intense, and they were loud and abrasive, and they might have used some interesting language, yeah. Deanne. I'm just saying, I'm just trying to help you out a little bit here. And so, um, so it said that they rose up and they did it at, at an interesting time. It says twilight. And twilight, you know what twilight is. It's like it's not really, you can't see very good. It's not perfect uh, clarity. It's, it's like I, I cannot see clearly. It didn't look good. It didn't sound right. It wasn't clear. They got to stay on the outside of the uh, city there. It was a time of rejection from for them, weakness for them, disease for them. And the culture in that day said if you got leprosy, it was because of great sin in your life. But I just followed on out in the Strong's Concordance, and twilight means a wind of inspiration and revelation is blown into your life. Yeah. So twilight, although they, you could not see clearly, there also was a wind of inspiration and revelation that came to them in their life, and they got up in that twilight and they released what God had predetermined to happen in their lives. So I believe prophetically in this season of time that we are in right now that God has some things set up for us. If we'll get up and, and believe and move in the word or plant the word, declaring the word of the Lord, whether it is in prayer, whether it is in your personal study. Listen, these lepers were hurting, they were afflicted, they were ostracized, they were separated from their family and from their uh, friends. And the plan and the purpose of God happened because four lepers got up and walked to the camp of the Syrians. So here we go. Tomorrow about this time. I'm all about it. I'm not passing my poll. <laughs> I'm not going to pass it. I'm going to keep I'm going to catch this one. Tomorrow about this time. Why sit we here? Till we die. Do we go or do we not? And they went. When you get up, now this is what I love. When you get up, you attract the attention of heaven. Yeah. And Kenny's there. So you, yeah. I just, I love thinking about, my mom is there. Yeah. You, you all have people. You know. When you get up, when you get up in that situation, you've heard the word of the Lord. And you're on the outside. And you decide you're going to make a move. When you hear the word of the Lord, you attract the, the, you, you attract the attention of heaven. And the reason that I'm saying that is, listen, they, they may have had to drug, drag themselves through the sand to get to where they were going. 
but the Bible says that the Syrian army thought that there were chariots and there were horses and there were all, it was like surround sound or something that was so, that they ran out of, of their tents or their houses or whatever it was and if they, and they did it at twilight. So the twilight for them was they couldn't really see because if they could have seen that these guys were eat up, beat up, raggedy, old, leprous people, they wouldn't have ran, but God turned up the sound system, made them sound like chariots, and they had the wind of the inspiration and revelation and strength to make that decision and make a move. The facts were hidden in the twilight, and the same twilight breathed inspiration on these men. So we make a move. I mean, it, it's a little bit tricky right now. Okay, just, we, okay, do I go here? Do I believe this? Do I do all that? Listen, let's just believe that a wind of inspiration and a wind of revelation and a wind of truth is going to blow on uh, us. And let's just, you know, John said, you know, what, what difference does a handful of people make? God had his way with four people. Amen. Four people that were eat up and beat up. So the word is for this season of time for rejoicing, this is what, for one thing, we are far above all of that and God doesn't need a whole lot to do a lot God doesn't he, he doesn't need a whole lot to do a lot so we are seizing a moment in time just like Esther did she sees that she heard something that her uncle said hey we're gonna we're gonna have to we're gonna have to Take the mask off, and you're going to have to tell them who you are. We're going to seize that moment of time. We're going to take advantage of the opportunity, and that's what Esther, and that's what these four, four men did. They said, well, we're lepers. They didn't have a mask on, but they went anyway took the mask off, take advantage of that opportunity, and she made a risky choice. What did she say? If I perish, I perish. What did these boys say? Why sit we here till we die? And then they moved on that decision. So let's lift our hands. Father, I thank you today that, that, that you are far above. And we are seated with you, and we're far above. And I thank you, God, that we're getting a fresh wind of inspiration and revelation and knowing of the truth, which you, Jesus, are the way, the truth, and the life. And you're at, uh, revealing to us even the power of your name, that every knee will bow at that name, and every tongue will confess yes. Jesus as Lord. So I thank you, God, for this season of time that we're in. I thank you, God, for your moving in ways that help us to maneuver on the path <coughs> that you would have us on. And so we bless you, and we thank you, and we say the celebration has begun in Jesus' name.